who are here today and I have to run to another service so I'm not going to detain you long this day. I want you to turn your books real quickly to the book of uh, 2, Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 1 as we get into the second novella of Fearless. The Bible teaches us in 2 Timothy chapter 1 beginning at verse number 3. I thank God whom I serve as my ancestors did with a clear conscience as night and day I constantly remember you in my prayers recalling your tears I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy I am reminded of your sincere faith which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice and I am persuaded now lives in you also. For this reason I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. Now, if you're reading from the King James Version, it says that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Just for a moment, just shout this word, I'm fearless. Come on, say it like you mean it, I'm fearless. You may be seated in the beauty of holiness. This is very important as we get into the second novella because I believe that each and every one of us is fighting the spirit that Paul calls a fear. We learned last week that fear is the cause or the effect rather of sin. Sin is the cause fear is the effect we know that because we recognize that that immediately when God came and walked in the garden the Bible teaches us that Adam and Eve became afraid why did they become afraid they became afraid because now their fear was misdirected their fear was, 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 was placed now in the emotion of being scared when their fear should have always remained in reverence to God. Fear in itself is something that we all fight in many sh shapes and forms and it is, ladies and gentlemen, a bondage. Fear strips us of our power, it causes us to fail, and it makes us unstable. Want me to prove it to you? So glad you asked. For when you are preoccupied with worthlessness, failure, false humility, and the like, we become bound in defeat. It strips us of the authority that we actually have in Christ Jesus. So what do we do? It, once we have been stripped of our authority, we begin to try to mask it over with other things. To try our best to make it seem like we're fearless when actually we are scared. If you think about it for a moment, everything that we get into at this stage and point of our life that has caused us a great failure in our life has something to do with fear, which is the uh, effect of the cause of sin. Uh, if you think about insecurity for one moment, it's just simply someone afraid of something about 
about themselves. They don't, they don't see themselves as worthy. They don't see themselves uh, as God created them to be. They do not see themselves in the image and the likeness of God. They don't see that they're wonderfully and beautifully made. And so what do we do? We mask over it with anything we can find so that others will not see the insecurity. Oh, if you saw yourself as God saw you, you would not cover yourself over with leaves all the time, but instead you would stand boldly and say, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Oh, when God began to talk uh, to, to Adam and said, where are you? Uh, uh, Adam were, came around and said, I am hiding. And my question here today is what are you hiding from now, God can see everything that you do God knows what you do matter of fact God was with you while you were doing it y'all not gonna talk back to me and I'm not gonna fight with y'all this morning it, 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 it seems very clear to me today that many of us have been operating in this spirit of fear and the reason why is because it's misdirected emotions. God did not give us that. He gave us liberty. Somebody shout, I'm free. Uh, I, I, you didn't say that like you really meant it. So, so let's try that one more again. Just come on, shall I say, I'm, I'm free. Now, 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 it takes about three times for that to get in your spirit. Come on, shout it, I'm free. Because, because the truth of the matter is, if you're bound in your fear, uh, you will try your best sometimes to mask it over with other spirits. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If I'm afraid of, of 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 being alone, I will bring other spirits into my life. I'll bring other spirits into my existence. I'll bring other spirits into my atmosphere. Even worse, I will bring other spirits into my bed. And even worse, I will bring other spirits into my body. Y'all not gonna talk back to me. I told you I'm not fighting with you today. It, 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 it seems so 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 easy for us to to to, to mask over our pain. And so now we bring other spirits in uh, uh, the, 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 the spirit of, of drunkenness which is nothing but one spirit trying to mask over another spirit uh, we bring the spirit of drugs in which is nothing more than one spirit masking over another spirit we will bring on uh, uh, the, the spirit of bitterness which is nothing more than one spirit trying to mask over the other spirit we will bring over in the spirit of anger and, and find ourselves trying to mask it over by being somebody that they're not. But I'm just wondering if there's anybody in here that's tired of being bound by things of this world for the wages of sin is death and the gift of God is eternal life and I want life and I want life more abundantly I'm not going to sit back being afraid about what other people think or, or say about me I mean they, they, they ain't writing you no check they ain't putting no roof over your head they ain't they ain't putting no food on your table they ain't doing a doggone thing but sitting around talking about stuff and the reason why they talking about you is because they want to be you come on and you, you just ought to just go ahead and enjoy being you come on just say I'm going to enjoy being me no, oh yeah, oh yeah I am, oh yeah. It strips me of my authority which causes me to fail. How does it cause me to fail? Because we, we know that we were made lovers. Oh, you ought to put your berry white on and say I'm a lover. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We were made as, as lovers. And, and, and the Bible teaches, Paul taught us this way. He said, love <laughs> never <laughs> fails. <laughs> when we walk out of love, the power of love, the authority of love, uh, the spirit of love, do you know you will fail every time? <laughs> but because we are afraid of the outcome of the future, mm -hmm, uh, we tend our best to try to protect ourselves from something that is not even real uh, 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 look at somebody tell them it ain't real it ain't real it ain't real uh, well one of the things that people 
people uh, have said, and one of the quotes has said, uh, F-E-A-R, that false evidence appearing real. Another one, uh, Zig Ziglar put it this way, forget everything and run. It's amazing, ladies and gentlemen, that, that fear uh, keeps us running instead of standing tall in our faith. The reason why our love fails is because we fail to love God. Mm. Uh, because see, you got to remember, you you you, you wasn't created uh, 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 you wasn't created for, for for everything else. You were created for God. You were created to be a lover of God. You were created to be a worshiper of God. And and what I find, ladies and gentlemen, is this: most of us are really truly afraid to worship. <sighs> First thing we'll say is, hey, don't take all of that. Oh, that ain't me. That ain't how I do things. We'll find any excuse to not express how we feel about God. Worship, that's all it is, is an expression of how you feel about God. And you know, they use these old, these old lame excuses, well, that's not how I am. But you, yeah, it's amazing you're that way when somebody step on your wrong toe and the next thing you want, you want to put your hand on your hip and cock in your neck and getting all loud. But when it comes down to worshiping God in public, you are ashamed to own him. And the Bible teaches us if you are ashamed or afraid to own him before man, he would be ashamed or I'll be afraid to let anybody in my house that won't respect respect me oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would be I, I'd be very afraid to have somebody around me in my domain that won't honor me that has got to be some place sometime that you can take me out of the closet and at least walk hand in hand with me Oh, y'all not going to talk back to me here. Yeah. Uh, fear, fear, fear will keep you bound. And that's why your love fails. And here's another reason. Because, because see, fear is an enemy to your faith. If by chance you could stand up and face everything, you would rise. Face it. Stand bold as a lion, not being afraid of the future just because you can't see it. Some of us right now are, are, are overthinkers and we become anxious when the Bible teaches us be anxious for nothing. We're, we, 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 we get in ourselves uh, uh, this, this overthinking mode to the point where we play out everything before we get into it. Well, if this happens, then this may happen. Or this may happen. Or this one will do this. Or this one will do that. And, and the truth of the matter is, faith is the same way. So you have to pick one. Fear or faith. If you pick fear, it will affect your faith. But if you pick your faith, it will overshadow your fear. <laughs> uh, I've got to be able to stand on the word of God and know that his promises are true. Because no matter whether I see it or whether you see it, the Bible teaches me this. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for me. But I do know this, that God has prepared something for me. You ought to just tell yourself God has prepared something for me I'll say it again God has prepared something for me this past week was an interesting week it started off really really interesting as I have been watching this case about a church where a son uh, uh, was, was escorted off the property of a church that his mom and his dad built ah they, they had 
toiled and labored and uh, uh, over the years and had acquired some 160 acres of land and then built a nice beautiful church in Washington DC along with senior citizen complexes and business centers and colleges and schools and, and after the mother and the father passed uh, all of a sudden uh, uh, some, 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 some looky loos and some wannabes uh, snuck into the camp and changed some paperwork in order to steal, kill, and destroy. But how many know that when you believe and you stand on the word of God, no weapon formed against you will prosper? Well, it took them three years. Three years in court. Three years of depositions. Three years of letters back and forth. Three years of toiling. Three years of worshiping in a school. Worshiping in gyms. Worshiping wherever they were, wherever they needed to be. But one thing was for sure they believed that God would do anything. I wonder if there's anybody in here that believes that God can do anything. Now we talk that stuff real good. We talk that stuff real good until stuff happens. Uh, oh, don't let the bottom fall out. Now all of a sudden you, you, you're back in fear. Don't let the bottom fall out. Now you're back in disbelief. Don't let the bottom fall out and all of a sudden you will find out, you will find yourself crying and, and down in the dumps with the blues. But if you stand on the word of God, God will work all things together for your good. I, I had forgotten, Tammy, about this thing. I had forgotten about this news article and all of a sudden a post came out that there was victory in the camp. And you know what, my nosy self, I had to go and find out what kind of victory it was. So I, I looked up and I googled that particular uh, 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 church and, and guess what had happened? Uh, some three years later uh, uh, God gave it all back. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying. Did yeah, yeah, yeah. God gave it all back. Now, now, now wait a minute now. Yeah, because you got to know that you know that you know that you know that you know that God will open doors that no man can shut and shut doors that no man can open. They went and they sat back patiently because they were waiting to see if an appeal would go through. Mm -hmm. And so we're sitting back waiting thinking that's going to take more years. But in three days, y'all not going to talk back to me here. In three days, the, the judge came back and said, uh, no, no, my decision is final. You've got to know that you know that you know that you know that God's decision on your life is final. He is not going to change his mind about you. Matter of fact, what he will do in the midst of your struggle, in the midst of your sin, in the midst of your fear is cover you. You ought to look at your neighbor and tell him I'm covered. I, I'm so covered that sometimes it doesn't seem like it's going to work. But you've got to get in your mind that fear is not going to make me go crazy. How many of you know that there are some people right now in the cuckoo bin, I mean cuckoo for cocoa puffs, and taking medication because fear got into their spirit. There are some people right now that are on anxiety medicine because cause of fear. There are some people who have to go to counselor week after week because of fear. There are some people right now that I uh, that have panic attacks and have anxiety all because of fear. But I heard the Bible say that a minded man is unstable in all his ways. You need to make up in your mind that God is not forgot about me. Touch somebody and just tell them God has not forgot about you. Look at somebody and tell them God has not forgot about you. Encourage somebody and tell them God has not forgotten about you. I can't be unstable about the fact that, that I may be going through some stuff. I can't be unstable just because I've got a few uh, storms in my life huh? because if Jesus can sleep in a boat huh? while there is a tsunami going on huh? I can rest uh, in the promise of God huh? if God can say huh, that if you keep your mind on me huh, I'll keep you in perfect peace huh? why am I worried huh? and that's why I got to tell 
tell you today, if you're going to pray, don't worry. And if you're going to worry, don't pray. Because many times what you're doing is canceling yourself out. Because God is not going to sit there playing tug of war with you. Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. There are many times when I come in and I just don't feel like it. I mean, I just don't feel like it. And so what I try my best to do is try to lean on y'all. But unfortunately, at the same time, y'all pulling on me. So I say, do you want to know something? We ain't going to play tug of war with this thing. If you don't want to praise him, I'll praise him. If I got to praise him all by myself. And I don't know about you here today, but I'm not afraid to give God the glory at any time. In the good times, in the bad times, when I'm happy or when I'm sad, it doesn't make a difference because I know that my latter days shall be greater than my past. Good God, I feel like preaching up in here. I don't know about you, but I'm not preoccupied with worthlessness. I'm not preoccupied with failure. I'm not preoccupied with what other people think or what other people may say. But I'm going to face every situation and rise because I know what the Bible says. And if I know what the Bible says, I've got to believe it. you got to get it up in your mind I, that God said it. I believe it. And that settles it. Come on, say it. God said it. I believe it. That settles it. God said it. I believe it. That settles it. God said it. I believe it. That settles it. I'm not going to be misdirected in my fear, but I'm going to put my fear in the right place, because once I put my fear in the right place, it's in the place of reverence. Good God. Somebody ought to just say, I'm a fearless worshiper. Yes, I am. I'm a fearless worshiper. I'm not going to wait until a crowd shows up, but I will bless the Lord at any time because where two or three are gathered in his name, there he is in the midst of them. Well, it's a dead church. The reason it's dead is because you're dead. But if you allow the spirit to breathe in to you, you shall become a living soul. I wonder if there's anybody in this place that's alive. Good God. And I don't know about you here today, but Paul said, good gosh, Paul said that we are all many members with in one body i don't know about you but at my last biology course which was uh, probably some uh, 30 some odd years ago uh, one of the things i remember uh, was this uh, is that uh, when one uh, portion of the body uh, begins to fail uh, the other ones uh, the other organs uh, and the other limbs uh, go into overdrive uh, now when Wait a minute. Isn't it amazing in the body of Christ when one fails, we all fail instead of going into overdrive. Because when we go into overdrive, we take the weight off the one in order that it may strengthen itself. But then I found out this, that if by chance that organ does not 
come alive, it will begin to die. And as it begins to die, infection will set in and it will start killing off the rest of the body. And now all of a sudden, you got to make a decision. You got to make a decision to keep this dead thing or cut it off. I don't know about you here today, but I'm sorry to tell you, I'm not afraid to cut it off. Cut off that negativity. Cut off that fear. Cut off that complacency. Cut it off. Somebody shout. Cut it off. Because I know that if I cut it off, if I got to come living, at least I'm alive. If I got to come on crutches, at least I'm alive. If I got to come in in a wheelchair, at least I'm alive. Yeah, 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 I'm, a, I'm alive. I am a part of the fellowship of the unashamed. I have Holy Spirit power. The die has been cast. I have stepped over the line. I am a disciple of His. I won't look back, let up, slow down, back away, or be still. My past is redeemed. I'm finished with low living, sight walking, smooth deeds. Colorless dreams, pain visions, mundane talk, and dwarf goals. I don't have to be right, first, cop, recognized, praised, regarded, or rewarded. I now live by faith, lean on His presence, walk by patience, lift by prayer, and labor by power. My faith is set, my gate is fast, my goal is heaven, my road is narrow, my companions few, my guide reliable, my mission is clear. I cannot be bought, compromised, detoured, lured away, turned back, or delayed. I will not flinch in the face of sacrifice, hesitate in the presence of the adversary, or negotiate at the table of the enemy. I won't give up, shut up, let up, until I have stayed up, stored up, prayed up, paid up, preached up for the cause of Christ. I am a disciple of Jesus. I must go until he comes, give till I drop, preach till all know, and work till he stops me. And when he comes for his own, he will have no problem recognizing 